What we're going to do here is to look at a special class of graphs so as to understand some of the things that we've learned about Euler circuits and Hamilton circuits. These are called complete bigraphs. So let me show you an example to begin. Here we have a complete bigraph. This is said to be the complete bigraph using four vertices on the left and two vertices on the right. And indeed, as you can see, I have given myself four vertices arranged in a column on the left, two vertices arranged in a column on the right. So there are your vertices. What about edges? Well, the rule for putting in edges is like this. For each vertex on the left and each vertex on the right, there is a single edge. So for example, here's a vertex on the left, here is a vertex on the right, and as you can see, there is this one edge that I'm following along right here between them. And for every vertex on the left, for every vertex on the right, you put in a single edge. There are no edges that go between two vertices on the same side, so there's no edge, for example, like this. And there are no loops. Okay, that exactly tells you which edges you're supposed to use. Now, looking at this particular example, let's ask ourselves, how many vertices does it have? Well, that's pretty clear. It has six vertices. There are four on the left. There are two on the right. How about the edges? Well, if you count them, you'll see that you're counting eight. And you might feel that you could probably do that in a pretty systematic way. For example, there are two that you're counting here, and two here, and two here, and two here, right? That counts all the edges. So it's a total of eight edges. The next question that I'd like to ask is, does the graph have an Euler circuit? Well, that has to do with the degrees, right? This is certainly a connected graph, so we want to know what are the degrees. Well, looking at a vertex over here, we can see that its degree is 2, and in fact, of course it's 2, because there are two vertices on the right it needs to be connected to. In fact, all the vertices on the left in this example have degree 2, and similarly, all the vertices on the right have degree 4. And since all of those numbers that I just named are even numbers, we know that this graph does have an Euler circuit. Now there we used Euler's criterion. For the next question, we don't really have any general criterion, but nevertheless, we can still figure out, does this graph have a Hamilton circuit? Well. Suppose that it did. Let's say we start over here on the left. We pick one of these vertices. Let's say we start here. Okay. Now we have to follow some edge. Let's say this one. And it takes us to a vertex over here. And now again we have to follow some edge and go to a vertex over here. And you quickly realize that any time that you're trying to make a path in this graph, that you're always alternating between the left side and the right side. Well, of course, because all of the edges cross over from the left side to the right side. So if you begin, let's call this number 1, at this vertex, then vertex number 2 will be on the right, vertex number 3 will be back on the left, and so on. So you're always alternating sides. So let's see, if I were trying to make a circuit, then this would be my fourth vertex, and then I could take my fifth one over here. And now, oops, I'm stuck. You see, I've run out of vertices on the right while I still have vertices on the left. So in fact, I can see that this does not have a Hamilton circuit. Well, probably from the example, you already got the idea of what a complete bigraph is. In general, you're supposed to specify two numbers. Now, anytime I draw a picture, I will have two specific numbers chosen. But you want to think about this in general. This is just an example here in which m is equal to 4 and n is equal to 6. But I could take any other pair of positive integers just as well. I could follow the recipe, that is to say, I could put down the appropriate number of vertices on the left, that would be m vertices, and I put down n vertices on the right, and then the rules for drawing in the edges 
are for each vertex on the left and each vertex on the right, there should be a single edge. And they're not supposed to be any loops, and there's not supposed to be any edges between two vertices on the same side. Now you can see if you choose numbers such as 4 and 6 already, it's an awfully complicated looking picture. Although the idea is simple, the, the picture tends to look rather complicated. Let's look at one more example. So here I've decided to put three vertices on the left, three vertices on the right. And I ask again, how many vertices in the graph? Well, that's clear. There are six. That's three plus three. How many edges? Nine. And you should think, oh, that's three times three, right? Because there are three vertices on the left that need to be con connected to three vertices on the right. That's, that's nine possibilities when you're, you're choosing a vertex on the left and then choosing a vertex on the right. All right, let's ask, does the graph have an Euler circuit? Well, what are the degrees? The degrees of all the vertices are 3. And so by Euler's criterion, it does not have an Euler circuit. On the other hand, does it have a Hamilton circuit? Yes, I can easily show you one. Let me draw one in. Let's say I start right here. And I can simply go like this. Go take this edge here. Take this edge to go 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 to this vertex, which I haven't visited yet, and finally go back to the beginning. Now, notice I didn't use every edge, and I'm not supposed to, right? I did visit every vertex exactly once. By the way, when we say visit every vertex exactly once, the one at the beginning and the end is only counted once for beginning and end. So anyway, why did it work? Why did it happen to work that we were able to find a Hamilton circuit here? Well, what happened was we had exactly the same number of vertices on the left as we did on the right. And therefore, we used them up at the same rate. We first of all used up the vertices on the left. We used the very last vertex on the left. And then immediately afterward, we used up the last vertex on the right. And then we were able to go back where we started. OK, so I think it's probably becoming clear to you what happens in general, let's give the general responses. Let's consider any complete bigraph. That is to say, let's suppose we're given any two numbers, m and n. They could be the same. They could be different as long as they are positive integers. And we can now begin to ask the same question. How many vertices in the graph? Well, there are m vertices on the right. Let me write that down. And there are n vertices on the right. I think I just said that backwards. I meant to say, of course, m on the left, n on the right. And so the total number of vertices is m plus n. When I'm counting edges, well, I've got to think, well, I've got m vertices on the left, each one of those to be connected with n vertices on the right. So now the correct operation is multiplication. So m times n. And in algebra, we don't even write that symbol for multiplication. We just write the letters next to each other. So m times n is our answer. What is the degree of each vertex on the left? Be careful. It's true there are m vertices on the left. But the degree of each one is the same as the number of vertices on the right. It's n. Similarly, the degree of each vertex on the right is m. And now we have the last two questions, which maybe take a bit more thought. Does the graph have an Euler circuit? Well, the answer is it depends. It depends on the values of m and n. We've already said that the degree of each vertex is either m or n. By Euler's criterion, to have an Euler circuit, both of those numbers must be even. And so the answer to the question is, the graph has an Euler circuit if both m and n are even, and otherwise it doesn't. As for Hamilton circuit, well, we've seen that if you're trying to make a Hamilton circuit, this forces you in this type of graph, just in this type of graph, to go back and forth between the vertices on the left and the vertices on the right. So the answer here is that the graph has a Hamilton circuit if m is equal to n, and otherwise it doesn't.